breaking the law. In 2003, we showed you the door. Now, 13 years later, I just want to roar. Go work in a drugstore, or join the Peace Corps, or hop in a boat and use your oar to paddle offshore. But don't claim God is your mentor and say that now you're allowed to break the law. That's the behavior that we abhor. Is this what you stand for? Not the people, but the foundation for moral law. Just so that you can go and run for governor? <laughs> and you'll do anything to get it, we know, because you're a terrible Chief Justice. <laughs> Our final speaker of today is the Chairman for Equality Alabama out of Birmingham, and his name is Clifford Beach. Well, I'm a decent extemporaneous speaker, but when I do that, I follow rabbits. And we go all kinds of places where we don't need to be. So I wrote it out. I hope you don't mind that I read. Not at all. Um, I know they've made a couple of announcements. One of the things that I'm supposed to do, if there are people here who would like to be married, is to do that. So is there anyone here now? I know we have people coming later. Because that'll change what I've got to say to y'all. Okay? I really had a feeling that this would be the situation here. Um, when, when um, the Supreme Court made their ruling that finally made same-sex marriage legal nationwide, you know, we'd already had our first ruling here in February, and I was very fortunate that day to go to the Jefferson County Courthouse after being turned away at the Shelby County Courthouse, but go to the Jefferson County Courthouse and, um, and marry a couple. There was a tremendous celebration that was happening at the courthouse at the time, and a lot of people got married. Well, when the, when the Supreme Court ruling happened, a lot of the same people went back to the courthouse to celebrate the Supreme Court ruling. But nobody wanted to get married. And one of the, the reporters came up and, and asked me, well, where are all the people who are getting married? It's legal now. I said, well, the ones who had to get married, who were just, have been dying to get married, did that in February. And now that it's legal, and now that it's possible to not worry about what's going to happen tomorrow, and knowing that they don't have to just sneak in under the wire in case something like Roy Moore happens to them again, they're planning their weddings. And they're getting married in the places where they want to get married. And isn't that a fantastic thing? Yes, it is. Isn't that a fantastic thing? So, back to what's written on the sheet of paper here. Um, when I was um, when I was planning what I wanted to say, I thought like Sandy did that by the time I got up to speak, everything that needs to be said would already have been said. It's like we have a, a tremendous panel up here, and, and um, I have to tell you that I that I am very honored and quite honestly humbled to be in, in the company of the people that are here. Um, we've had people who've served our country. We have people who have, have fought the, um, the legal battle on our behalf. We have people who have stood up for, for the rights of others worldwide. And I'm just a guy in Birmingham who posts to a web page and tries to keep people informed. <laughs> so um, anyway, so the things that I thought would have already been said that would be that Justice Moore needs to abide by the law before he tries to adjudicate it. That Judge Moore needs to, that Judge Moore uses the despicable politics of hate for personal gain. That his latest attack is nothing more than a distraction from his son's problems. That he thinks that the more he plays the gay card, the more Alabamians will bankroll his foundation and by extension, his personal checkbook. And that more is an embarrassment to Alabama. And more importantly, more important than that, he's an embarrassment to the Constitution that yes, he swore he to protect and defend. And to all of that, to all of that, I have to say, you're right. He is despicable, at least his politics are. He is an opportunist, he's a political manipulator, and for all those reasons we've been saying all day long, 
no more. No more. So, since everything that needs to be said about them has already been said, I think what I want to do is just give you a quick report from the trenches about the reality of marriage equality in Alabama, at least my reality. Ron Mathis is my partner of 18 years. He can't be here today. But he's my partner of 18 years, one month, and six days. I know that it's so exactly because exactly one month and six days ago, I proposed to him on our anniversary. I'm very proud now to not call him my partner, to no longer have to call him my partner, but to call him my fiance. You know, see, there's power in words. After calling ourselves, after calling ourselves husbands for many, many years, what a joy to be able to use that word fiance legitimately. And soon we'll be able to call ourselves husbands rightly, legally, without any asterisks, without any footnotes or, quote, or air quotes, because the United States Supreme Court has ruled like so many lower courts before them, and as Judge Grenade ruled here in Alabama, that marriage is a fundamental right of citizenship, and as such is protected under the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution, which guarantees due process and equal application of the law to everyone, whether you're gay or straight. Amen. Since Christmas, Ron and I have been planning our own wedding, so that's it's how I kind of know how I had a feeling that um, people weren't going to be jumping at the chance to get married on the, on the courthouse steps this, this afternoon. But um, like many couples, we were torn between going big and grand or keeping it sweet and simple. We know we want our families and closest friends to be there. We know we want the ceremony to be outside. We've got an idea of a mountain view. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And we know we want it to be in May, manly May. We'll leave June to the June brides, right? So we're shopping for a place, and honestly, I was a little apprehensive about how we were going to be treated. You know, there's been so much chatter over the last year about bakers and, and photographers who, who don't want to serve gay couples, right? And with all the noise that the guy behind us has been spewing in recent days, who knew what we were going to run into? Can I tell you that we could not have had a nicer experience here in Alabama? and the state Roy Moore considers its own, people are treating us beautifully 100% of the time. At every venue, Alabamians don't seem to care that we're two men getting married. And I'm not just talking about people who are very politely gritting their teeth and doing their job whether they like it or not. No, these people are celebrating us. We've had people literally hold our hands and sincerely congratulate us. We had one girl nearly cry. I mean, it was... I'll, go off, I'll go off text just for a second. What I did propose to Ron, I did it in a public setting. You probably think since he's up here in the microphone, he's pretty good at, at public settings and all that kind of thing. It's not really my thing. I, I got to tell you, it's not really my thing. But it just had to work out that way. And um, I was telling the story of how Ron and I met and, and how we got together. And um, in, that, in the, the first day that we met, he told me no when I asked him if, if I should just leave him alone. Because I thought I was kind of pestering him in that he wasn't interested. He said no. And I said, and then when I proposed to him, I said, that was the sweetest no I ever got in my life. <laughs> and today, I'd like to get a yes. And I went down on my knee and everybody gasped. And um, I thought, where do you think this story was going, people? But, uh, <laughs> but he did say yes, and we were proposed, um, we were engaged, and then, thank you, and then right after that, this lady who I'd never known before in my entire life, never met her before in my entire life, came up and she gave both of us this huge hug, just an enormous hug, and she was crying. And I just said, are you really crying for us? And she said, that's the sweetest thing I ever saw in my life. <laughs> anyway. That's the kind of reaction that we're getting everywhere we turn. You know, whether it's been the city of Birmingham employees, state of Alabama workers, state of Alabama workers, really, and private venue managers, venue managers they've all gone above and beyond our expectations. And, I, and I, I, I'd like to give just a special shout out. I'm not supposed to do commercials. Maybe I am. I don't know. Um, just to Amanda Baker of, of Aldridge Botanical Gardens in Hoover, if you have some long-range planning to do for a wedding, Aldridge Gardens and Hoover is a good place to go. But, and I say that because they are booked. We, had, we wanted to, be, to, get, to get married there and they are booked out. But Amanda took more than an hour and a half of her time, not only 
to, um, to discuss the venue, but to give us advice on catering, and photographers, and all these kind of things. This kind of um, going above and beyond is, is something that comes from the heart, and, and, it, and it's very gratifying. And it's not just the public and commercial venues that are welcoming. While some people, some people feel very free to speak for the church and to claim to know God's will regarding same-sex marriages, the Presbyterians, the Episcopalians, the Reformed Jews, some Methodists, even some Baptists, even some Baptists are happily marrying same-sex couples, and it's happening every month, maybe every week, right here in Alabama. This is the real Alabama. This is the Alabama that knows that love is love. That man up there says that marriage isn't about love. In his mind, if marriage was about love, listen to this. I get a wind right now. If marriage was about love, his wife, this is according directly to, to Roy Moore. If marriage was about love, I keep coming back to that. If marriage was about love, what a crazy thing to even say out loud. His wife could marry her horses because she loves her horses. This is Roy Moore's way of thinking about marriage. Okay? Well, you know, I love my dogs. And I mean, I love my dogs. They're our kids, right? Ron's not here tonight, today, because one of our dogs, 16 years old, is, is, had to go to the vet. We're going to have a claw amputated today. That's not fun. I love my dogs. They're like my kids, but I don't want to marry them. That, that man later said that his comments about animal love were no way meant to imply that same-sex marriage is bestial. But of course, that's exactly what he wanted to say. It's the politics of manipulation and hate, and he's a master of it. The thing is, real Alabama, the real Alabama doesn't buy it. He was thrown out of office with his tail between his legs once before, and it's time for it to happen again. Yeah, that's it. Exactly, no more, no more. At this point is when, if I, there was someone to marry, I was going to do it. But I want to leave you with one thing. I'm not the world's greatest reciter, but I'm going to read a poem to you because it's all about love. It's all about love. It's all about love. There's a poem by Maya Angelou. It's called Touched by an Angel. It's not an easy poem to read, but I'm going to give it my best shot. I hope I do it justice. It says, We unaccustomed to courage, exiles from delight, live coiled in shells of loneliness until love leaves its high holy temple and comes into our sight to liberate us into life. Love arrives and in its train come ecstasies, old memories of pleasure, ancient histories of pain. Yet, if we are bold, Love strikes away the chains of fear from our souls. We are weaned from our timidity. In the flush of love's light, we dare to be brave. And suddenly we see that love costs all we ever will be and all we are. Yet it is only love that sets us free. Folks, those, that's my comments for today. I feel, I feel freer now than I ever have. And it's because, in spite of other people's complaints and efforts to, to take away freedoms and to, and to deny even the existence of our love, we are here, we are proud, and we know the truth of, of who we are and, and, and the love that guides us. And I just appreciate everybody being here, and I appreciate being invited to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, Clifford. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I, I would go on and like to announce that we have a wedding plan for 2 o'clock. Um, and at this time, um, what I'd really like for you guys to do, I know that the weather's been in, getting cold, and like Roy Moore, the sun has not shined upon us all day long. So what I'd like for you guys to do is to remember that we're all family here, and it's okay to get close and snuggle. So would you guys from the back, come on, let's move on up here a little closer to each other. This, um, this is what we need to do when we're not here. We need to start moving a little closer to each other. This is how we come together, ladies and gentlemen. Side by side, 
sharing the warmth of each other's hearts against the cold wind of ignorance. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here today standing before you. I do not have a piece of costume jewelry on me. I do not have a bead or a sequin on my body. Because I am not here as a drag queen. I am not here as an entertainer. I am here as a free and equal citizen of Alabama. Each and every one citizen of this state deserves free and equal representation under the law. There is no this, that, or the other. We decided all about red, yellow, black, and white back when we was in Sunday school. They told me Jesus loves all the little children. Red and yellow, black and white, gay and straight, day and night, all are precious in his sight. Now, if you decide to take it upon yourself to go and shove hate and discrimination in the mouth of God, that is for you to answer for. That's right. yeah. Because the God that I know, the God who guides me, the God who has whispered in my ear and saved me from being attacked, the God who has whispered in my ear and saved me from being beaten on many occasions, loves all of us, yes. not some. Liberty and justice is for all, oh. not some. Yes. Yes. Let's tell Roy more of that real quick. Like, would you join me? Liberty, Liberty. And, justice. and justice for all, for all. Not, some. not some. Liberty, Liberty. And, justice. and justice for all, for all. not some. Liberty, Liberty and, justice and justice for all, for all. Not, some. not some. Those walls are thick one more time from the bottom of your soul. Liberty, Liberty and, justice and justice for all, for all. Not, some. not some. I got one more that I want to remind everybody uh, about, especially Roy Moore. And I believe, I'd, like for the, I'd like for all of our speakers to stand with us and, and snuggle up. I know y'all are getting cold. We got a lot of faith ministers here. I want to be sure that they get their chance to be a part of this last chant. Because sinners hate, God does not. 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 If anybody had any questions as to why I was here, I think I'd just answer. But right here, right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd, I'd like to go ahead and tell everybody, um, baby, can you give me a time check? Because I don't, I, I, I talk so much, I don't want to be sure that we haven't run over too far. Okay, uh, we're right on time and schedule. Ladies and gentlemen, um, before we, we break uh, for, for, the, for the wedding, um, I would like to take this personal opportunity to thank each and every one of our speakers who have come here and joined us today. Um, if you would, give a hand and a wave as I call your name. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to give it up for the currently struggling, for the enduring, Mr. Paul Hart. Yeah. From the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Tuscaloosa, Mr. the Reverend Fred Hammond. Yeah. From the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Montgomery, Reverend Lynn Hopkins. Regional Director for the American Atheists, Chuck Miller. Activist and International Peace Walker representing the Human Rights Campaign, Ms. Audra Scott Williams. Founder and Executive Director of Free to Be Anti-Violence Organization, Mr. James Robinson. The first openly United States gay seal, and I want to take this time to say again, thank you for your service, sir. Yeah. Yeah. And a man who deserves to be equally respected, not only as a citizen, but as a veteran of this country, 
Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for Brett Jones. I'd also like for you to give a round, another round of applause for activists and International Peace Walker representing the Human Rights Campaign. Also, Ms. Karen Hunter Watson. The founder and president of the Montgomery Humanists and one of the organizers who's been helping bring this together along with myself and others. Y'all give it up for Ms. Zandy Anderson. The chairman of Equality Alabama, Birmingham. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Clifford Beach. And at this time, I do want to give a special shout out to some people that I've been working with for the last week. You know, a year ago, I said, all right, we're going to Montgomery. And they said, no. I said, what? <laughs> what do you mean we're not going to Montgomery? They said, Montgomery County is cooperating. Sit still, Miss Ambrosia. Mind your manners. We're not here to upset people. We're here to bring people to our side. I said, I don't like it, but all right. <laughs> Last Tuesday, when the news hit the, hit the fan, y'all know what I wanted to say, but when the news hit the fan, a friend of mine had posted this on Facebook and I responded back to him. Do you still think I'm crazy? Are you ready yet? And my dear friend and one of our organizers, Mr. Keith Ingram. Y'all give it up for Keith. Come on up here, baby. This young man looked at me and said, Girl, I'm putting on my shoes now. Are we going? Let's do this. And I said, I said well, I'm kind of working right now. I've got three children I'm watching and looking after. I can't go this second. He said, Girl, hold on. And he reached out to this man. Ladies and gentlemen, give a hand for Chris Jimenez Cherry. Yeah. Christopher, Christopher hopped on the page for Equality Wiregrass, and the next thing I knew, 15 minutes later, I had to take down a Facebook post. <laughs> I sure did. I sure did, because I'm not going to lie to y'all. When the news first hit the fan, I got mad. I got so mad because I've been saying, come on, let's go to Montgomery for a year. Didn't want nobody want to go. I was furious. And I put it out there. I guess it's time for me to give up. On Facebook, I openly said, it's time for me to give up. I guess, you know, Alabama gays and lesbians just really want to lay down like a doormat for this man. And just let him walk all over because I can't get nobody to stand up. And I want to thank each and every one of you here today for reaffirming my faith in my own community. I want to thank Keith and Chris, Mike Walker for the Montgomery Humanists, Ms. Andy Anderson, uh, Ms. Maya Raver from the Powerhouse, who's given us the chairs that we're sitting on here today. Um, and, as well as HRC Alabama and Equality Alabama for reaching out and helping us make this happen, for providing the connections for our fabulous speakers today. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not over and we're not done yet. Um, uh, we just found some, we found it, got a hold of some water for the coffee pot. Girl, you, you got enough for another round? Okay, we're going to have just a little bit of music because I want you guys to stay, mingle, meet each other, shake each other's hands. We do this in church all the time, honey. I know it's shocking to find out that a drag queen goes to church. I don't wear makeup in front of Jesus, but I go. <laughs> no, 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 no. Y'all don't have to thank me for anything. And I want y'all to know this from the bottom of my heart. I am here right now to thank each and every one of you that I see here. You made this possible. You made this happen. And I want each and every one of you here right now to attend the next movement. Go home. Tell your friends what they missed today. Because this is not an event for one city. This is not an event for one group. This is a movement. We have already we have already gone all the way to the Supreme Court and back again. And this movement is not over. It's not over. Let me say this again. Y'all say it with me. It's not over. 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 Because we still have to protect our jobs. We still have to protect our housing. We still have to protect each other yeah. and our children. Yes. Yes. We have to protect 
our own community and each other. Gay, straight, black, white, red, yellow, pink, polka dotted, or blue. It does not matter. All we're asking for is to be free and equal citizens under the law. And it's time for us to come together, just like we're doing right now. Share the warmth of our hearts. I don't know about y'all, but I don't feel as cold as I did a few minutes ago. Can I get an amen? Amen! All right. Well, I want y'all to stick around for just a very few minutes. We have a wedding scheduled for Roy Moore to enjoy. And that's right. We're going to play a little bit of music so you guys can get a chance to, to reach out to each other, talk to each other for a few minutes, warm up, snuggle up. In 15 minutes, I believe we've got a couple that is willing to be met, wed on the church house steps right in front of Roy Moore. And I promise, you don't want to miss it when that man peeks out the window and sees exactly what he don't want to. So y'all, please, stick around. We'll be right back.